Now let's take a look uh, at each uh, of these uh, lobes to appreciate more fully uh, the functions uh, that are associated with them as well as the various uh, subdivisions of each lobe. And we can also explore as we move through each lobe uh, what might happen if there's a lesion uh, within a specific area of, of a lobe. So here, uh, we're looking at the primary uh, motor uh, cortex. Uh, this is shown right in through here in green. The primary motor cortex is associated with the gyrus that's immediately uh, anterior to the central sulcus, and this is the precentral gyrus. We have the famous homunculus uh, associated with the primary motor cortex, and the little man, the homunculus, demonstrates the density of upper motor neurons that are going to control the musculature of various regions uh, of the body. So we see a large area here mapped out uh, for the face because a large number of motor neurons, upper motor neurons, are going to control the muscles of the face. We also have a large area here mapped out uh, for uh, the hand, and again, a large number of motor neurons are going to uh, control the fine, delicate movements that are associated uh, with this part of our uh, anatomy. Uh, this homunculus does extend over the top of the cerebral cortex, over the top of that precentral gyrus, and continues on the medial aspect. Uh, we'll see that continuation on the next slide. An important aspect about motor control is that uh, the motor neurons on one side, uh, here we're looking at the left precentral gyrus, they're going to control uh, the contralateral uh, muscles, those that lie then on the right in this case. What might happen if there's a lesion uh, within the uh, precentral gyrus? Uh, that will cause contralateral paralysis or paresis. And because you are uh, damaging and destroying the upper motor neurons, uh, you may very well see a Babinski response depending on the location uh, of the lesion. Uh, so if the lesion is in this area specifically, uh, you would have contralateral uh, paralysis or paresis uh, of, the, of the hand, for example. If we continue our view here on the medial aspect of the precentral gyrus, and again that's shown uh, in green, uh, we can see the buttocks lie here on the superior aspect of the precentral gyrus medially, and then you can start to see uh, the lower extremities continue distally so that the feet are approaching uh, the cingulate gyrus uh, that's along here. And so if the stroke is in this area and you have a lesion in this area and you're unable to have upper motor neuron control uh, of the distal extremity, uh, of the lower extremity, then that's when you can see a Babinski response as well as the contralateral paralysis or paresis of that associated anatomy. Uh, another area of interest that I want you to understand uh, is that of the premotor cortex. The premotor cortex lies anterior uh, to the uh, primary motor cortex and we see it's a small area here, but it's essential in the programming of motor uh, events. And so this programming will then cause these neurons that reside in this territory to activate prior to the primary motor neurons that are within uh, the precentral gyrus. Uh, a lesion of the premotor cortex is associated uh, with apraxia. Apraxia is a motor uh, speech uh, disorder. Uh, this can be associated with other lesions in the frontal lobe. Our next uh, area, the frontal lobe, is that of the supplemental uh, motor cortex. Uh, we see it identified, again, anterior to the precentral gyrus, and uh, it's involved in the planning of complex uh, motor uh, movements. Uh, a lesion of this cortical area uh, can cause apraxia as well. Another area within the uh, frontal lobe 
is the frontal visual field cortex. This area right in through here. It's even a bit more anterior to the other areas that we were uh, describing, that I was describing for you. It's involved in the coordination of voluntary uh, movements. A lesion of this small area uh, can result or will result in paralysis of conjugate gaze to the uh, opposite uh, side. And this is discussed uh, in another uh, presentation, what conjugate gaze uh, is and how that circuitry uh, works. Another important area within the frontal lobe is this area in blue. Uh, this is uh, Broca's area, shown right in through here. Uh, this is the area of the frontal lobe that's involved in word production or motor speech. A lesion here uh, results in expressive aphasia uh, or non-fluent aphasia. Uh, lastly, uh, within the uh, frontal lobe, I want you to understand the uh, prefrontal uh, cortex, and we see that area here. Uh, this is the area of the cerebrum that takes some degree of maturation to become fully functional. Uh, this is involved in executive uh, functioning, and one of the, the functions uh, under this heading would be that of problem solving. It's also involved in making day-to-day -day multiple judgments. Uh, many times we make very, very good judgments or decisions, and these judgments as we mature tend to make us make the right choice or the right decision. And another aspect of executive functioning is that uh, this is the area that allows us to plan. It also drives behavior uh, and uh, emotions. It's not the only area, but behavior and emotions are uh, modulated by the prefrontal uh, cortex. And then an area of the prefrontal cortex uh, is involved in uh, olfaction, the olfactory pathway. <music>